What's going on guys? Welcome back to Garage 23. And boy, has this been a year for coolant issues. So I don't drive this car a whole lot, but occasionally I will just take it to work. So it's not just sitting here all the time, let it stretch its legs and whatever. And I don't even work that far. I work like three miles from here, four miles, something like that. And in that distance on the way home, even though it's a brisk December evening, it decided to blow up the radiator. And when I say blow up the radiator, I literally mean like, I've never seen this happen to a radiator before. It literally just phew, exploded and just water everywhere, steam everywhere. And it didn't even, it wasn't even overheating. It was, I was just, I wasn't even stopped in traffic that long. It was just cruising at like, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour through construction. Like there always is around here, but yeah, it, it literally exploded. Want to check it out? <laughs> So yeah, this is the inside of the radiator where the water should be contained. And as you can see, there's uh, quite the opening where stuff literally came flying out. So yeah, this is our um, show car that we mostly use for one of our sponsors to show at his events. And we can't exactly do that if it's gonna overheat within like a city block. So we need to get this thing changed out and maybe see what else is wrong. Cause I don't know if there's some other issue that caused this to begin with. And this is just a side effect of it, but let's dive in. So first thing you should do whenever you need to work on the cooling system is drain the coolant. This car kind of did it for us already. I don't think there's really much of anything in here. So we got this spare turkey tray in the spirit of Thanksgiving, uh, just in case there's a little something in there. there for a second. <laughs> All right, now we can take the clamp off the lower radiator hose. Okay, now we got the upper radiator hose and the cooling fans to take off and it should pop out, I think. Never done the radiator on this car, obviously. <laughs> for the cooling fans. The overflow bottle. And these, whatever they are. Okay, it's easier just going down. <laughs> I 
Yes, I know the right here fan shroud is pretty smashed. Should take care of that. Probably not going to. <laughs> okay, important note. There's a 10 mil bolt in there that's holding the AC condenser to the radiator. So we need to take that out first. Attached at the bottom too. Okay, so the radiator is kind of attached to the condenser at the bottom. It's got like a, a slot and the condenser sits in it. So you gotta lift the condenser out to let the radiator come out. Let's see if we can do that without taking the whole front end off. There's one. There we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. But as you can see, utter trash. This is literally falling apart. So it would be nice if we had a sponsor to help us out with this, but we don't. We had to buy it ourselves. Ta -da! I've always wanted to try out their radiator since they're, they seem to be all the rage nowadays. And let's do a little unboxing. That's, that's what you do on the internet, right? Cool looking packaging. Please recycle after use. Keep the environment in mind. That's nice. We got a lot of these. Ooh, and we get a goodie bag. It's got penguins. I love penguins. Save the penguins. I think that's an air freshener. Penguin scented air freshener. <laughs> yes, my favorite. Mishimoto guy to Nissan performance cooling. Cause they know Nissans have overheating issues. <laughs> Very nice. Forsberg. There we go. Yeah. Fancy. Fancy radiator cap. Some companies don't even give you a radiator cap. You know who you are. So at first glance, it looks pretty good quality. The walls look really good. The finish is pretty nice. It's pretty thick. So yeah, let's get this bad boy in there. All right, so before we toss this thing in the trash, we actually need to take these little rubber bits off of it. And it looks like we only have one of the top ones. 
the other one looks like it was, it's been gone. And then there's two on the bottom. And you put those on the new one. Thing we gotta put on the list for the junkyard. Just gonna get this out of the way because we already cracked it. Random plug that I don't know where it goes. That's where all our coolant was. This is to the windshield washer fluid bottle thing. So we don't have one. <laughs> okay, so fitment, not great. Um, main issue, is that these brackets that hold the AC condenser, they're too big and, or they're too long, I should say. So I'm probably gonna try and grind off a little bit off the edge here, because this isn't letting the radiator like straighten out and go where it's supposed to go. Or, we could try and grind off some of the plastic down here, but that seems like it would be trickier. Especially with the AC condenser in here that we could potentially grind a hole in. So yeah, radiator it is. Right, I think that worked. Now I just gotta bolt the condenser back to the radiator. <sighs> All right, that was a pain in the ass. What's worse is I can't tell if it's because of the car or the radiator. So full disclosure, this is a salvage title and it was in a front, well, like front left and collision and door. It was like kind of sideswiped. Anyway, this front end was replaced before I got it. And I don't know if it's because of that, that the radiator's not lining up. Cause it seems like the, the dowels and the radiator are both too far to the right. And it wasn't um, letting me put these little retainers back in place. But again, I don't know if it's because they were, they were welded too far to the right on the radiator or if it's because the car probably isn't as straight as it used to be. But this this radiator support piece, it's all one big plastic piece. So the, the part where the radiator slots into at the bottom is the same piece of plastic at the top. So it doesn't make sense that that wouldn't match up to the radiator because it's all, you know, one piece of plastic. It seems kind of like the little dowels were welded and slightly the wrong location on the radiator, but again, I can't really say 100% on that. So take that how you will, but we got it in there. I just kind of had to remove the little rubber isolator that I had on here. And it kind of works out that we only had one because I just moved it from this side to this side. And that gave me enough room to barely, yeah, I'm not gonna take that off to barely get that one back on and get the other one on there. So now we can put the rest of the stuff back on.
about how this day is going. Slightly less crappy than it was before. All right, now that we got everything all bolted back up, we need to fill her up with coolant, antifreeze. Uh, this car had green coolant when I got it, so that's what we're gonna put back in here. And I always buy the concentrate just because, I don't know, it's the same price and you get like twice as much if you just mix it yourself. So the way I mix it, it's supposed to be 50 50 so I figure you just empty the bottle in a big gap big um, bucket once it's empty then I'll just fill it back up with water then dump the water in there then this should be close enough to 50 50 so let's go fill this up enough all right so for this to work you kind of need a funnel that's pretty wide so I like using this apparently oil funnel locking oil funnel for this I mean it works on a radiator cap too so that's nice and we should probably check the drain plug before we dump all that in there. And it was not tight. All right. The Mishimoto drain plug needs a crescent wrench to tighten down, not a screwdriver like most other ones. And now, try not to spill it everywhere. All right, now we can go ahead and take the car down so we can fill it up properly. And I should probably take the old coolant out from under there. Ready for marinating the turkey. So once you have it topped off, we can go ahead and close it. Bothers me that the end doesn't sit where it's supposed to. Now, we should turn it on and let it idle for a bit, but it doesn't have a battery. Let's go find a battery.
radiator and we're immediately overheating. So back to the garage. There's coolant kind of splattered everywhere, but I can't really tell where it's coming from. And there's no shortage of hoses on this car. According to the homicide videos that I see, the splatter is moving in this direction, which means the culprit is probably somewhere in here. Right. Well, regardless, we're going to have to wait for it to cool down and put it back in the garage. Okay, so I think I figured out what's wrong. The upper radiator hose is super hot. Obviously, the car was overheating, but the lower radiator hose is like super cold. So that's a big flag right there. Um, also, the air that's coming off the radiator fans, that was really cold too. I mean, it's fresh outside right now. So that's why it's like really cold. But comparatively, like when it's functioning normally, everything should be pretty evenly hot and right now since the lower radiator hose and pretty much everything in the radiator is still really cold even though the engine's hot that tells me that the thermostat's probably bad and it's not opening that also kind of explains why the other radiator exploded because if the thermostat is stuck closed then all that pressure doesn't have anywhere to go and is essentially just building up inside until the engine gets too hot and has to go somewhere. Well, unfortunately you can't win them all. Um, I was really hoping it was just a brittle old radiator, but that wasn't the case. It was actually, well, we still actually don't know 100%, but um, what we found so far, a pretty good indicator of a bad thermostat. We're gonna have to go find a brand new thermostat and then that's probably gonna be another video because I'm pretty sure the thermostat's gonna be a whole deal on its own. So thanks for joining us this time and stay tuned to the next one and see if the thermostat fixes this thing. <laughs> see you guys.